Hi, Susanna. Hello. You. Good. How are you? Okay. So. Nice to see you. I'm glad to. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Katie. Hello. Hi, Katie. There I go. So, huh. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's what we can say. Katie, how are you doing? Very good. 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 Glad Surviving in this cold weather. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. Your home well insulated? Uh no. It's a 1975 trailer. And it doesn't have uh, any insulation? Probably not much. Yeah. So you, you have the heat cranking, huh? Well, we, we're used to it. The house doesn't usually get much above 64 anyways. Yeah. Uh, that's about what we keep it at. Um, yeah. So, and we have insulated curtains. And yeah. we did replace our front window, which was a which was original to the trailer. And yeah, we replaced it with a, you know, a good thermal type window. And right. that has that has helped a great deal. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Windows can be a big air leak. Yeah. So I I keep my house at 55. <laughs> I, well, have, ours, ours I have goes down to 55 stone. at night. Yeah. 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 Five at night. And the last couple of nights we've left the cupboards open so nothing froze. So yep. yeah. Uh, Are we making you cold, Susanna? I you know, uh my house is not oh it's very it's pretty variable because it's such an yeah. old house. It's like depends on where you are in the house for sure. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Some were some rooms are better than others. Um, but yeah. Oh, it is chilly though. 55. That is cool. Yeah, it is. Yep. It yeah. is definitely chilly. I mean, I do turn it up to 60 when I'm preparing for work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was I worked from home so I could keep the wood stove lit. That's good. That's good. Hi, yeah. Bill. Our place. Hi, Bill. We got an Hi, infrared Elena. heater. Hi, Elena. Nice. Hi, Elena. Yeah. Here I am saying, Elena, do we know each other? Maybe we do. You're muted, Elena, or Lena. Sorry. Uh, um, I think so. You look, you look familiar. Maybe from like the pollinator group. Or yes. Maybe. Yes. That's it. That's it. Hi, Bill. Are you there? Peter, good. Hey, Peter. Hey, y'all. Hey, Susanna. Haven't seen you for a bit. I know my class is over. Thank heavens. <laughs> no, it was a good semester. I was glad to get to teach in person, but I'm so sorry I have that means that I am gone for many months at a time. So I'm glad to see you all. It just I yeah, I teach this big class from 5:45 to 8 something on Wednesday evening. So okay. um, it's I'm glad to be done with that and I'm glad to be back with you all. Are right, do you have that for the spring semester also? Yeah. I no. don't know. Okay. It's a fall semester. On Mondays okay. and Fridays this semester. So okay. no conflicts, but I don't have any conflicts. All right. Very nice. Yeah. How are you, Bill? I'm fine. How are you? All right. Good. Yeah. So um, Lena has been appointed an alternate for this committee. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Wow. That's great. All right. It, yeah, right. and um, Josh Walters is um, also has been appointed as an alternate for this committee. So oh, wow, That's great. yeah, so we have two alternates. 
filling this position. Um, I don't know if he'll be joining us tonight just because it was um, very last minute. And I also, while I was thinking of it, need to write myself a note to add you and Josh to the email list. I'm wondering um, if Lynn is thinking that the meeting is going to start at six. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And let's see if I have, I think I might have her phone number. I'm just going to mute myself and see if I can reach her. Okay. Susanna, what class do you teach? Um, in the fall, I teach a classroom management class for teacher for future teachers. So oh, cool. I teach, yeah, or a classroom, I don't like the name classroom management. It sounds like, I don't know, classroom supports. So um, for folks who are going to be elementary school teachers and special education teachers and music teachers, actually. So it's a super fun class to teach. It's just, a, it's a big class, which is, um, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I have not taught too many big classes in my, my experience. So it's, a, it's definitely been an adjustment. So it was really nice to get to teach in person this semester. I was really, I taught it online last year and that was okay, but yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was good. I know. Yeah. I feel very lucky. It feels like an important time to be supporting future educators. I mean, it sure. always is, but right now, particularly. So, yeah. That's great. Thanks for asking me. How's yeah. the, you? There's a pollinator meeting or a pollinator presentation right after this today, right? Yeah. Um, one of the uh, researchers from called Eco, I think it's Eco. 59 um, is speaking to talk about different ecotypes and why it's important to plant for our region. So well, that'll be interesting. That's great. Oh, that's yeah. terrific. That, yeah. That's why the meeting was moved to um, 5.30 to, but yes, she was thinking it was six o'clock. Um, she's been away. So she's, I think she's scrambling to, so she'll be on in a few minutes. I didn't know if somebody wanted to start the meeting. She said that would be okay to call the meeting to order and, and um, yeah, yeah, so. I'm unmuted, so I'll, I'll go ahead and dive in. Can I I, I'll call the meeting to order. Okay, 5.36 p.m., all right. Um, there is a quorum here, so um, Elena, you can, or Lena, sorry, I keep <laughs> wanting to add that E to your name. Everyone's fine. <laughs> Be seated for Al, um, could, or who else is there that's on the committee that isn't here tonight? Um, Other than Lynn. You don't have... Uh... Eo Smith guy. Oh, Matt. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, right. Matt. Matt. So Matt. you could be seated for Matt. Let's see. Oh, Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter's here. Oh, yeah. okay. He's just sure. muted. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So did everybody check out the December 8th meeting minutes? I did, yes. Okay. So Susanna, take it away. <laughs> 
I have a motion to approve the December. I've been such a slacker, but so I need to pull my weight this time. Um, I have a motion to approve the December 8th meeting minutes. So moved. Thanks, Peter. The second? I'll second it. Thanks, Katie. Katie. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. That's great. Okay. Anybody opposed? You know, Susanna, with you as a, a classroom management expert, it brings out the mischievous student in me. I, I, I tend to want to make trouble tonight with you. <laughs> Go right <ahead. laughs> Yeah, but Ginny can drop you. So <laughs> instead of going to the corner, you're going to go to the press bin. <laughs> or she can at least keep you muted. Um, <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay, uh, what's next, Ginny? The, ne the only um, business which encompasses quite a lot is sustainable CT. So uh -huh. um, the committee at the last meeting, first of all, does everybody know Elena? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. um, all right. So um, at the last meeting, there was some conversation about things that the sustainability committee could do. Um, one of which was to um, act as kind of coordinator for other committees and boards to, to enlist them to get uh, um, involved in the sustainable CT certification process, which if you recall is is to recertify, uh, the re recertification is due by the end of the summer. So, um, and so that was one, one role and, and another was um, to advocate for solar ca canopies. So um, one of the things that Katie had said was that she'd be willing to send a letter to committees, boards, commissions to get them on board so uh, would you would you like me to screen share? I have a um, well, they're pretty they might be hard documents to see on the screen. Um, they are ones that I sent with the um, agenda. One was the 2019 actions, and the other one was what we did. What did I say? 2019 actions. The other one, hi Lynn. The, the other one was the actions for 2021, which I think are gonna be very similar to 2022. Maybe Lynn can steer me if, I'm, if I am behind times by catching the 2021. We're on sustainable CT, Lynn. <laughs> So would you like me to screen share that to, to um, yeah. go into actions that other, other groups, uh, staff, town committees could be involved in? Sure, that would be great. I'm sorry, I messed up on the time, guys. And there's construction going on in my house and I'm trying to find a quiet spot. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought the dog was growling. No, it's not. I want to try the bathroom. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, also, Ginny, I will tell you that I was very remiss. Uh, I got a letter done. It's very, very rough of a draft. And I sent it to your email your work email, but not okay. until late this afternoon. So uh, hmm. I don't know that I saw it um, before you I probably left. haven't yet because it was okay. at probably closer to five o'clock when you oh, okay. it, it would have been yeah. sent. Uh, okay. I had it done, but realized I hadn't sent it to you to share with people. But it's a very rough draft. Uh, I had Al look it over just to see if, uh, uh, you know, just to tweak some wording, but it's going to need a lot more tweaking. But at least I've made a start on it. Thank you, Katie. So, and 
Katie, that letter, did it, um, um, so the intent of the letter would be to say, hey, here's the, let's say it's Board of Education, for instance. Yeah. yeah. Um, here, here are some, um, would, we have sustainable CT coming along. Do you want to read it to us or? Well, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I think one of the things that was mentioned at the last meeting was possibly in that letter, just suggesting or presenting ways that they could engage in an action. So actually yeah. specify some actions that might, they so might- What I want to do is also include in the letter the list of what we did in 2019 and uh, a list sort of like this list here, print it out and send it with them also. So the okay. different groups could sort of look at it and say, oh, we're doing this, Let, oh, we can do this. And then they'd get back to us and we can make a chart of who's doing what and that type of thing to sort of fulfill stuff and be able to track it. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you want the letter? Do you guys want the letter read? Um, Katie, thank you so much for doing that. It sounds great. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't, yeah. Maybe Jeannie and I can take a look at it. I don't think if the whole, if the committee's, I mean, I think the committee's grateful and comfortable um, that you're doing it. So um, yeah, we'll put together the accompanying stuff and that'll be great. Does that sound and, good to And I'm willing good. to work on any part of it, uh, doing envelopes, uh, stuff like that. That's an easy project for me to do. And I'm, really want to encompass every committee, organization, town department uh, in, let's see, I want organizations, committees, town officials, town departments, and individuals to take on the responsibility of fulfilling some of these items. And I also wanted to share with you, I shared it with Jenny, uh, in the, December 30th Chronicle, uh, the mayor was interviewed. And in it, she put that one of Mans, this is her talking, one of Mansfield's priorities in the new year is to obtain gold certification from S Sustainable CT. Sustainable CT is a voluntary certification program to recognize thriving Connecticut towns. It offers a list of best practices to make town more sustainable. Towns choose sustainable CT actions, implement them, and earn points for, towards certification. The program is in the process of creating a goal certification, which the town of Mansfield hopes to earn in the new year. The town is looking to build a number of projects to help obtain the honor. We are looking at a whole range of environmental proposals from solar power at the new school to solid waste management, Moran said. Um, I happened to see her just be, well, yeah, it was just before Christmas. And she came over to the house, there was a town council party and uh, she brought food over to Al, we weren't able to go. And she's the one that brought it up. And I had said how much I like being on sustainability and everything. And she says, I said, we really want to try to go for silver again. And she says, I think we should go for gold. So I think we've got the mayor behind us on this. So it might make our job a little easier. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Katie. I was on vacation, so I haven't caught up on the Chronicles. I hadn't caught that. Um, so yeah, let's work on this. 
I like the idea that it's a, a physical letter being sent through snail mail. And we have some new like two page brochures that describe sustainable CT that are colorful and appealing. So we can include that stuff in there too. Um, I will say that we did announce we're working on gold certification. It won't be ready for towns to apply this year. Um, it'll be ready next year, but that doesn't matter. She's totally committed and wants to go for the top. So we'll shoot for silver this year and go for gold next year when it's available. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hmm. Um, I will say that, and Lynn, you might want to report the climate um, designation. Do you want to report that? Um, sure, yeah. One thing we, this sustainable CT did just launch is a climate leaders designation, and it really aligns very nicely with Mansfield's um, the resolution, the climate emergency resolution we all worked on, and the town council passed. Um, so it's uh, you know kind of recognizing towns that do actions that are already part of sustainable CT but have high. We lost you. Oh, sir. Are you there, Lynn? Climate impact. So we'll, yeah, do a spreadsheet that, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're out again. No, yeah. Are you there? Um, is she, I guess she's, she's frozen. frozen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. All right. Um, well, yeah, it's a designation and, uh, for climate leaders. So we'll, Mansfield will probably try to, uh, you know, see, see if we can reach for that as well. Um, so do you do you want to go through the the um, list or should we talk about one of the things that was came up at the last meeting was about um, having a town committee and board meeting. So we did this in 2019 twice. We invited committees and boards and commissions to a meeting, it was a dinner meeting. Actually, I think it was a dinner meeting twice. And we asked the staff people that worked with those committees, commissions, boards to attend as well. And um, one of the meetings was to introduce equity, the equity action and um, what equity means. You know, Glenn Matoma, who is now the chair of the human resource, uh, human, what is it? It's HRC, human, oh geez. Resource? No. Right? Uh, rights Commission. Human Rights right. Commission. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Human Rights Commission, thank you. How embarrassing. Um, <laughs> um, so he did a, a presentation on equity and then there was some activity around that. So. Um, there was some conversation about doing that again, having a, a board committee meeting, and um, would you want to discuss that? So what kind of path do you want to take for the rest of this meeting? Um, shall we go through the list of actions and the identified committees that could be involved with those actions? Am I getting nods of yes? I don't. I don't know. Sure. All right. If, okay. if I identify those, that would be great. Okay. To know. Okay. Huh. So, I think Lynn is coming back on. Um, 
sorry guys this is just like a disaster of things happening over here so internet connection i'm on my phone is a hot spot now so i can hear you i hope you can hear me but um uh yeah so the i i had suggested that we go through this list of actions and the um committees or staff people that are uh, that might be involved in that action. So do you have different thoughts on that, Lynn? I think that's great, Ginny, go for it. <laughs> okay. All right, so this first one here, can you see my cursor? Yeah, uh, 1.3. Okay, so develop and adopt a statement on equity. The, you know, the town has a human rights commission, so there might, already be something that has been created, but this would be, you know, under the realm of the Human Rights Commission. Um, participation 1.2 in equity training. Um, TM, we're thinking over here, our, our little note, thinking that the town manager would be the one who should be initiating that training for staff members. And, um, and committee members, you know, anybody that's really interested in participating. Um, so the um, implement sustainable purchasing, the solid waste advisory committee is interested in, in re reviving the effort that they started on a purchasing, a sustainable purchasing policy so that's something that that committee um, and and I as the staff person will be will be working on, um, and that has to you know we need to have buy in though from the finance department and um, and the schools because we want to include in that as well. So there's there's of course some preliminary work that needs to be done. Um, so the, the implement sustainable purchasing has a couple different steps to it. So there's training, there's a municipal resolution, and then there's actually adopting a policy. So that would be that would be um, initiated, you know. And I think sustainability could be joy, could be working with SWAC on that, like like you did with the plastic bag ban, you, you know, were supportive of that and made your voice heard. Um, and then as far as local retail options, the downtown partnership and the um, economic development commission, I think it's commission, the, they could be working on um, outreach to local businesses and you know some of this stuff they may have already done, and uh, some of these things we applied for in 2019 that potentially could be rolled over. Um, promote sustainable workforce development. If if any of you think that there are other groups that could join in with this, please you know jump in and let me know, and I'll add it in the margin here. Jimmy, uh, quick question. Um, somebody has been talking to or sending me lots of emails about extended producer responsibility, and uh, it cert seems to be circulating a resolution, a municipal resolution to municipalities. Is that in, is that on uh, T's radar, and, or is it on Mansfield's radar? Um, it is the town. Council passed a break free from plastic pollution resolution in, I, I don't know, I kind of lost track of years with the pandemic, but I, I think it was early 2020 when they passed that resolution embodied in that is um, extended cruiser responsibility for packaging. Oh, perfect. So, and, and SWAC has met with, um, um, the representative, Greg Haddad, mm -hmm. uh, 
we had a meeting with him and talked about packaging extended producer responsibility and also and so they've asked that I invite um, May Flexer and Brian Smith to an upcoming SWAC meeting also to talk about it. So the, ho the hope is within um, the solid waste uh, people that there is going to be the Environment Committee introduces a EPR packaging EPR bill this year. So um, legislators really need to hear from towns like this. This um, um, you know we're I mean the, yeah. <laughs> Not to not to get into another crisis, but the, the state of Connecticut kind of is poised for um, waste issues, you know, coming up with the oh, Hartford trash incinerator closing in June for trash, um, for incinerating trash. So, which puts puts pressure on the other incinerators. We use a different incinerator. Um, we have a new company that's managing waste. So our waste could conceivably start to be landfilled out of state, um, which is cause of concern because um, food scraps in a landfill is a big methane emitter. And, um, and right now we don't have any kind of compost collection in town because the infrastructure isn't there. So, mm. um, you know, there's all these things kind of going together. So. My point is that our costs, we can't anticipate that our costs are going to go up a lot with new contracts. And um, so packaging EPR would offset some of those costs because it's not only packaging in the recycle bin, it's packaging that people are throwing in the trash as well. Sure. So, as far as sustainable CT goes, um, there's no direct component uh, having to do with EPR in the sustainability program? No, because uh. sustainable CT deals with things that are within municipal control. And um, uh, that obviously is a, yeah, sure, state EPR law. is a state law uh, or a needs state legislation. So um, yeah, I mean, once there's, enabling legislation if there's a role for towns you know we might integrate something into it that's right i didn't mean to veer us off of okay. um all right so the c pace program that is something one time we did offer a program for businesses to come and hear about c pace um it wasn't very well attended, but I don't know if there are other groups that might, um, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, we, we did involve them a little bit in it. Um, they sent out invitations. And um, so anyhow, yeah, I don't know if- um, Can if I just say- yeah. It actually was very well attended um, because I went out and got 25 businesses to show up, um, but it was not, there wasn't a lot of follow through. Um, yeah, okay. It wasn't much uptake, so it didn't matter that, that it was well attended. Um, yeah. I know that the Green Bank has had some issues, you know, making CPACE take off. I mean, they've, they've had some success. It certainly would be worth trying again if the uh, uh, business committee wanted to do something. Yeah, so. and I'll just say on that one that we've, Sustainable CT has changed that action a little bit um, to really uh, kind of get the economic development uh, people in the town um, working directly with the Green Bank so that, um, it's not so much on the shoulders of the town to reach out to the businesses, but it's kind of more the town um, connecting with the local business community and then the Green Bank will do more of the, yeah, outreach stuff. So we should take a look at it again, I think. Okay, but it could be something that the EDC, um, yeah. yeah, pursues. Okay, and um, then the, 
uh, watershed work. Um, Jennifer Kaufman is working with the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District on that. Um, and the same with a management plan for watershed. Mm -hmm. um, so everything watershed. And Jennifer Kaufman's working with the engineering intern on developing an open space plan. Um, JK is Jennifer Kaufman. So there's a lot of Jennifer here. Um, Facilities, you know, they could they can be asked to look into the 3.6 action and in conjunction with Yukon. Um, nothing has been listed as far as provide education on water conservation. So um and there has been work done in town on low impact development, which is about stormwater management. And Jennifer's working with the engineering department on that. Um, I'm not sure what BL is, the manage woodland and urban forests, but Apparently, there's a grant. I think it means Bill Lennon's going to do it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like that's being taken off by our mighty Jennifer um, with invasive species. OK. But, you know, um, the pollinator pathways group, I mean, maybe something in this area of invasive species could be taken on by them. Um, DPW, you know, we could do, in my opinion, DPW could do a lot more in implementing green grounds and maintenance, it, like in managing lawns, for instance. Um, I mean, they're doing a lot. They're doing some stuff, but could do more. Um, and then the pollinator pathways work that's already in process. Um, there's nothing on promote dark skies. Um, all about a vibrant and creative cultural ecosystem would fall toward the Economic Development Commission and Downtown Partnership. I have a question on the dark skies. Yeah. Is that dealing with uh, using better lighting outside of buildings and on soccer fields and stuff like that? So yes. that we don't we don't have that yes. that glow at night. Yes. Because that's yes. something, why don't you put that down for planning and zoning? Because that is something yep. we have to deal with. And we, we have some regulations already in place about uh, how bright it can be. You know, if somebody's putting in a housing development or a parking lot or uh, anything like that, we usually get all the specifics on what the lighting's going to be. So you could put us down for that. Okay. Yeah, that's great, Katie. That is amazing. Good for the birds, right? Yeah. <laughs> some, some cities have it where they have to shut off all the lights after a certain time too. I don't know if that's something maybe we could. I know, I was thinking about that too. I read about that also, Lena. Yeah. I, I I don't know if Yukon would because I think they're, they're our main source of light pollution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are the main source of light pollution. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, um, I approached um Rich Miller, who's now retired from Yukon, oh, about oh. collaborating with the town on Dark Skies University. And um it it didn't have too much traction, but I'm willing to go back 
to the energy guys at UConn because they actually have more control over it than environmental policy. Um, and um, from my sustainable CT side, there is a person who's willing to help one town um, kind of do an assessment and maybe maybe Mansfield's the town that's the most interested. So um, you can kind of put my name on that one too, Ginny. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah, I'll see what, uh, happy to reach out to UConn and happy to see if there's um, this resource that could help us like do an inventory. Okay. I think that's good. All right. Great. All right. Um, and then we have the support arts and creative culture. So there, that would be the arts advisory um, committee and, and Beth, Bethany Cologne, I, I guess she works in, I guess she's a colleague. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, she works out of yeah. um, community center probably. Um, we don't have anything here for develop a creative placemaking. Um, but I mean, could that, that Sorry, is that like a performance or or like what's a placemaking? I was wondering that too. Um, um, it's kind of a plan to, um, <clears throat> yeah, like use arts and culture um kind of bring people together to make the place somewhere people want to go um so i i could think that mansfield downtown partnership yeah might be yeah. yeah because like all those events that kathleen sends out and they organize um yeah it might not be quite the plan, but it might not be hard to kind of put something together. And I know they're doing strategic planning at Downtown Partnership, so okay. it's about, yeah. It's a good time to bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, arts and culture, I mean, the, I, I wonder if the schools. Um, yeah. So... I, I know of someone who is rehearsing actively right now on a piece for Earth Day, and they're actually looking for a venue. So I don't know, maybe I could help connect the dots there somehow. Why not? Nice, yeah. yeah. I'm happy to liaise with the schools around um, all of these pieces are at least documenting what's what's going on. I know we've changed some stuff recently to make, um, for example, lessons more accessible. That's now free for all students, um, whereas before uh, string lessons were at a cost. And um, anyway, there's more accessibility to the arts. That's been a real focus for us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We already have a bunch of the points. OK. Yeah, I know um, when we got points in 2019, the arts and culture, we, we didn't, I think we did one action in arts and culture. It was, um, so that was a little bit lean. Um, so, okay. The plan of conservation development has sustainability all throughout it, and that will just be carried over. I think it can be carried. I'm pretty sure it'll be carried over for um, this 2022 round. Um, so, so the planning department is working on that and um, ag friendly practices, Jennifer Kaufman and um, Taste of Mansfield. I mean, there's, I think that's, no, it's okay. It's Jennifer Kaufman and the ag committee that would be working on that. Um, assess climate vulnerability. So we did do an assessment back in 2019 or 2018 
um, and haven't really done anything um, beyond that, like what where we're vulner vulnerable in the town. So um, I don't know if there's you know more action. Well, uh, clearly there's more action that can be taken, but um, I'd have to look at that a little more closely. So. Yeah, I'm guessing that a lot of these things where it says rolling eligible for rolling credit. Yeah. Means if you've done something, you need to dust it off and look at it and do something like implement some things or revise a plan or add a strategy. So I think looking back at the climate vulnerability assessment is also, um, well, it's in the climate leaders and it's important. Um, the resolution was not just about greenhouse gas emissions. It was about adapting to the changes. So I think that's a, a really important one and we've got a good start. We need to look at that, that plan that was a result of that study and identify some of the things we should be doing, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good one for this committee. Um, that, that does tie in with the climate resolution too um, and benchmarking. So, which, which I think is coming up under energy. Um, so I don't know if the historical society is really active these days, but I'm wondering if some of this could be part of the historical society, the inventory and assess historic resources. Yeah. Um, it's definitely worth reaching out and seeing it might, right. might be something they have talked about and this pushes them over or, you know, encourages them. So historical society, is that like a non, that's not a committee. Is it like a nonprofit or what it, who are, what is that group? It would be a nonprofit, I would think. Okay. Great. The uh, ones who use the old uh, building on 195 where the museum yeah. is, those guys. Yeah. I think too that uh, they're listed as a town committee uh, simply because I bet we give them money each year. I don't know. But I think they are listed as a town committee. And if you want to, you can join it. Anybody can join it. But uh, it's still, I think on the website, it's a town committee. So we, and that's one of the outside organizations that again, we'd want to hit with this letter yes. and this matrix to let them know what we got and yeah. what we need them to do. Yeah. I love it. In the meantime, I see Matt and Al have joined us. Hi, Matt and Al. Welcome. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, so, Hello. Uh, hi. Um, not sure, but the building department would be the one um, regarding solar permitting for small solar installations. So, <coughs> Okay, fire department uh, could be in on 5.7. Um, complete streets, I know that, um, that the planning department is now applying for, um, uh, for some funding for some housing that would involve some redesign and traffic calming on 275. So that might tie in with that. So actually maybe I'll also put, let's see, at least pounds low. Well, anyhow. Um, and the other thing is maybe the bike Mansfield group. I think I would put in here. Yeah, definitely. Because I don't know how active they are. Um, I still get meeting notices from Lon. I think they're still yeah. going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. All right. Um, 
downtown partnership on parking, um, in, employing or deploying zero emissions vehicles. Um, that's DPW and mainly. So um, public transit and other mobility strategies. Um, there's, there's also, uh, we also should be including um, WRTD in this, I think. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, yes. And who runs the transportation center? Is that the downtown partnership or someone else? It is, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, all right, DPW is managing the municipal fleet, benchmarking. Um, we are in process of changing our, the platform that we use for tracking data. So uh, Lynn, you had given me that great tip that UConn has been doing this for a while actually, um, setting towns up with Portfolio Manager, which is a, a free platform and has, um, I think advanced over the years when we first looked at it, it wasn't quite as, um, didn't, didn't quite meet the needs, I think of the, of the town, but I think it's evolved. So they are moving all information from Energy Watchdog, which we pay for to Portfolio Manager, and that will allow us to benchmark. And I'm hoping that that benchmarking will be done within the six month period of uh, the climate resolution. So the climate resolution was passed in September. So we have, the town has until March to benchmark, you know, it, its energy consumption. So, or its climate, its, its climate producing output. Um, so that's going on, facilities in, is involved with that. Um, the climate resolution is, part of 7.2. Um, and we've got the schools on the um, elementary school. Yeah, we're going to be the first town to get a net zero building and huh. points under that. Yeah under 7.3. <laughs> so, maybe, so maybe we involve the school building committee. Yeah, it would be good. Okay. Mm. Um, so let's see, what's our time like? Okay, so um, I don't think that we don't have developed a municipal energy plan would Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, exterior lighting facilities has been working on that. Implement a community energy campaign. I put sustainability committee down. Um, so I don't know if the committee is up for that. Um, benchmarking water use. We don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of, um, uh, we have mostly wells, not so much water, universal water. Um, we could hold a sustainability event and actually there is plan within the town to to focus on sustainability and sustainable CT in the month of April with various town department activities. So that will be a focus, so that could apply. Um, Margaret, we wanna get Margaret Chatty, our communications coordinator uh, to be all over 8.2. Um, and same with 8.4. Uh, 
And we are collaborating with other towns for, um, we're gonna have a compost bin sale. So um, that is uh, Wyndham and Hampton are joining in with that. I don't know if that would qualify, but the other thing is the pollinator pathways. If we you know, get some tangible things done, then that would also be another thing. Ginny, I'm making an off task comment, which is I still have the compost bin that I got for free from you in like 2004. Um, oh, yeah. I still use it. Yes. Uh, Cynthia, I remember Cynthia Van Zelm and I were both at that event. And uh, I, I still have the same one. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. We're still using the same one um, in the town hall as well. So yeah, SWAC can will be all over the um, materials management stuff, and um, and you know I don't know how far we'll get with any of it, but um, we're going to reinvigorate the food waste prevention campaign that we had that never really took off, but we'll try again. Um, healthy food networks that's uh you know farm to family taste of taste of mansfield um eastern hey, um stephanie i always forget stephanie's last name from the schools is also a great person to maybe add to that list yeah i know she, i think she does taste of mansfield too but she might be yeah. um i know she does a lot of kind of coordination with school stuff yeah right yeah, I think that's um, an interest of hers. Yeah. Um, Board of Ed improve air quality in public spaces and Eastern Highland Health District possibly. Um, it's probably also facilities thing as well. Um, let's see. And affordable housing, that's planning and zoning. Um, which they are working on with a grant. There is also a new committee being formed oh, just what is, for affordable housing. What is it called? Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, the Committee on Affordable Housing or afford okay. uh, we haven't got a name yet. Okay. Uh, and that's something that I'll be able to help with. Hopefully, I'm being interviewed to be on the committee tomorrow night. So hopefully I'll get on. So we'll see. Okay, great. That's awesome, Katie. Yeah, very good, yeah. I was on the ad hoc committee, and, oh, which good. was an okay. extension of uh, planning and zoning. But uh, plus other groups, you know, the town councilors and that, and they disbanded the ad hoc committee and now want to have a regular committee to oversee certain things. That's okay. crazy. Katie, what committee are you not on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you uh, do everything. Uh, oh, I'm definitely not on town council. <laughs> That's all <laughs> out. <laughs> I think it sort of counts as being a family member of a town council. <laughs> so 12 is devoted to homelessness. So, um, which is a new category from 2019. So, um, you know, I think that tapping into human resource, human services, um, but I don't know if there are other groups in town that, um, could be tapped into for this related to, hmm. You know, that one we've talked about work with Willimantic's committee, Wyndham's committee, and um, obviously that would be, that could be a great one to kind of do collaboratively because um, there are regional services that hmm. apply. So I don't know, maybe there's like a regional group to bring in and maybe Wyndham Sustainability Committee. Okay. 
All right. And then um, I think that's it then. I mean, there's innovative actions, something that doesn't fit in these. Oh, geez, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, implement your own sustainability actions. So, okay. Um, so that was a lot of scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> But you and you and Jennifer did a lot of great work. So thank you so much for yeah. um, yes. doing that. And it'll be a work in progress. Um, and yeah, I think it's like ready to go out with the letter. One thing we might want to do internally and or for the committees is maybe we highlight the ones that are um, climate leader designations so that you know, if we're trying to choose one per category and get that, we know uh, we might want to put more priority on certain actions. Okay. And that there's a template for that that's accessible from the homepage that just lists them all. Um, yeah, okay, I can highlight that, you know, maybe, maybe the um, uh, Katie between you and me and Lynn, we can edit the spreadsheet to make it look simpler, uh, an easier read and, okay. Um, and also, I mean, it, so we're in the, we're getting applications for an intern to help with the sustainable CT application. Um, none of them have experience with sustainable CT. So um, it might involve some training. Um, which I <clears throat> maybe I can get with you, Lynn, about or Jess about, um, you know, how involved it is to train somebody on it. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't think it would be that hard, but yeah. um, the, the, the other piece to it is if, if this committee wanted to have some kind of joint meeting, then, then I would think that, um, we need to be working on it very soon. So, because I think you have a pre-application review in May, right? Isn't Sustainable CT doing that? Uh, it's April and it's not hey. required, but it gives a chance to get an initial review and feedback. So right. it's right. good to do. Yeah, so the letter, like Katie's letter is, showcasing the town's intent and commitment and uh, encouraging people to get involved. Do we want to just try to schedule if you're available? Um, I guess it's going to be a Zoom meeting, right? Um, on a certain date, we can do an overview presentation and entertain questions or something. It'd be pretty easy to throw together. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, we could, um, I mean, I feel kind of funny representing sustainable CT and Mansfield. So I'd probably ask someone from my staff to do the presentation. Um, so we could we could pull Chad or Jess in, Chad, Chad or Jess in to do that probably. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I'm just gonna say, I think we had our meeting today early so that Ginny and Lena can go to the next meeting that starts like in a minute ago. So maybe we oh. can wrap. I'm gonna just prompt us to wrap up. Thank you, okay. sorry, Thank you. I'm like yeah. not watching. Can we vote on the minutes? <laughs> we did. <laughs> we we already you did. Had a, you had a quote, okay, great, did. Yeah. awesome, okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's wrap it. Katie, Lynn, and Ginny can um, kind of. You're muted, Lynn. Oh, let's wrap it. Katie, Lynn, and Ginny <laughs> can put together the final pieces and um, start to get that out. And yeah. yeah. Thanks, everyone. Okay. So Thanks, in everyone. that so in that letter, there will be uh, a meeting time. Like yeah. we'll let's say, just okay. do it. Yeah. Just add do it. the right. meeting time. We've got to add the website. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. We're on it. Uh, Thanks, okay. everyone. Okay. Take care. See you. okay. Before, Before I leave, for... Peter. Ah, come back, Peter. Ah, oh, Peter. <laughs> so I just wanted to tell him that 
Mm-hmm. I have been driving over in the Vernon area, and it looks like the Vernon Police Department are putting in solar canopies over their parking lot. Oh, Very so, nice. Uh, I am going to go by that way and take some pictures just to show him. <laughs> nice. Very good. That's great. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everyone. everyone. Stay warm. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.